chart on to upgrading FreeBSD, doing it safely using ZFS boot environments. Some of the commands we're going to look at in this uh, tutorial are FreeBSD version, VCTL, ZFS, FreeBSD update, and package. Um, we're going to begin by looking at an existing system that's on 12.1 release, it's creating a boot environment, back uh, working boot environment, snapshot, and destroying the system in the default, and then restoring from the backup, and then we'll do an update safely. So without further ado, I've logged into 12.1 release, um, a box called DevTrain, and I've um, become root. To check that it is actually 12.1 release, I can go FreeBSD-version, dash KRU, which is for the kernel version, the running kernel version, and the user land version. All of them are 12.1 release. If we doubted my truthfulness on this, FreeBSD version, look it up in man pages, and it'll tell you those are your options, and here's what they mean. All right, anytime you use man, you're actually in less. If you type in H, it'll tell you all the different navigational choices that you have, Q to get out of stuff, and Q to exit. So we know that the version is 12.1 release. Nifty. Let's, uh, before we screw anything up, let's create a VCTL. But before we do that, let's check and see what's there already. We have a default boot environment. It is the active one, and it's going to boot the next time. So let's go ahead and create a new one. VCTL, a copy of the existing default. Um, as it exists right this moment, we'll create it and we'll call it working because it seems to be working. And then we can list again, and sure enough, we have a working. That's a backup. This is the current and the active. All right, so this uh, working thing, which we created at 1810, corresponds to a snapshot, uh, list-t snapshot, um, that was also created at 1810.15. Um, so we have a snapshot running right now, but it's related to the boot environment. What the boot environment looks like is, uh, can mount. it looks like anything that's mounted on root, I guess uh, probably whichever one, there, I think this, whichever is mounted after root. So this is going to mount on root. But anything that has this can mount equal off, is also going to be off of the root, like slash user and slash var. So slash user, slash var, and slash anything that's not covered by one of these others, like home ports, those type of things are going to get backed up. Audit, crash, none of these are going to be backed up because they have their own um, partition under the ZFS root thing. So another way to look at it is this, ZFS list. Anything that comes under slash is going to get backed up if it's not a mount. And we saw that user and var can't be mounted. So they are they just exist under slash. Whereas home port, source, audit, crash, log, all those are actually mounts on top of set of us. So I don't think they get backed up. But not 100% of that, call some expert. In the meantime, we have created a um, boot environment and it's running. So we can screw stuff up and get back to this working state that we had two minutes ago. Um, so my way of screwing things up is to rm-fr with slash bin slash star. That deletes a lot of stuff, including ls. <laughs> okay, so now we don't have ls, we don't have rm, we don't have sh, we don't have a lot of stuff. So nothing should work at this point. So I'm gonna halt the system and move out of the SSH environment and look at the console uh, here as it halts. All right, it's halted. I'm going to press the key to reboot and we'll watch it reboot. All right, and so it's going to boot this default um, environment if we looked at it. Uh, with the 7 for boot environments, we'd see that it's going to boot the active, which is the default. So I can press enter here, and it's going to boot it. It's going to rock on through some of this stuff, and if it doesn't crash the VM, it will crash when it gets to the fact that it doesn't have access to SH anymore. Yeah, right there. 
So it can't exec bin sh or add crc because there's nothing there. That's horrible, right? Worst crash ever. Don't don't rm slash r slash bin or any of that stuff uh, on your running system unless you are very careful, which I have been. So I'm going to close this, which is going to crash uh, VirtualBox more than likely, but that's okay. We'll just restart it. Yep, there we go. Going to restart it. And I'll um, start the console again so that we can see what's going on with the, the screen, basically. It comes up to the boot, in, uh, the boot menu. Uh, I'm going to hit a key, and then I'm going to press 7 for boot environments. And I'm going to, where it says active, I'm going to press 2. And it's going to switch from default to the working, which should be a working environment. The only things I deleted were on the, uh, in the system itself which is what's going to happen if you do a FreeBSD update or package upgrade or package update, any of that stuff. So I'm going to press uh, Enter after I select the boot environment. And this time it's going to go all the way to the login prompt, uh, pending any kind of issue that I might have introduced unexpectedly. So here it goes. It's going. It's already probably past that part where it crashed before. And it's waiting for me to log in. I will... I'll log in using SSH because it's just easier to see that way. All right, there we go. And uh, it's working. And it's still 12.1 release. So we were able to get back to a working system. So I'll become root again. And we'll take a look at those boot environments. And now I have the default, which is no longer working. That's uh, not good. Uh, so it's pretty useless. I'll get rid of it in a minute. But first, I have to activate working so that it boots when it, so that it is the uh, boot environment that happens when I reboot. So BCTL activate working successfully activated. So now if I BCTL list working is the NR, and I can get rid of default. So the way I get rid of default is I do bctl destroy default. And if I'm feeling really uh, cocky, which I am here, um, I can specify dash o so it gets rid of this, the ZFS snapshot along with it. So I'm going to do that so that I don't have to delete it by hand. And now if I bctl list, I have the working. And if I ZFS list dash t snapshot, there's no snapshots. Wouldn't want to destroy anything at this point. I'd want to be sure things worked before I did the cleanup, clearly. Um, but the last thing I guess I'll do is I'll rename working to default. And then bctl list and reboot. Just to make sure things are cool. And that closes the SSH session. But over here in this window, we should get a reboot. Comes back to BIOS and then the menu. Not really BIOS, but kind of BIOS. Hit enter. Let's, let's take the default. And we should come to the login prompt again. And we'll repeat some of that because we're going to do the upgrade now. And the upgrade is pretty straightforward, but it could screw things up. So it's good to do the basically the same thing. So I'll use the SSH again. Uh, no need to do it if you are on your own system, but it makes things easier for me. Okay, so um, first I guess I'll become a root. And then we'll check the version. All 12.1 release. Uh, the next step is to create a boot environment snapshot. We created one, but then we deleted it. So I can create it, call it working again, because the system is working again. Uh, I can list it, make sure I have done the right thing. ZFS list t snapshot. Should only be one, and it should correspond to 18.18 which is my working. So, yay, we're ready to rock. I can destroy the system again, or in this case, I can do an upgrade. 
the command for upgrade is FreeBSD update. And to um, fetch, we'll get the changes and install will change them. We'll install the changes. We'll do it in two steps. We'll fetch it first. So I'm going to do fetch. It's going to go get some metadata from the web. Um, it goes to update for BSD.org in this case. Gets the uh, checks the signature and then grabs the files. Unzips them, takes a look at my system, decides how many files it needs to go get, and then it goes and gets the files. All right, it's preparing to download. There's probably seven or eight hundred files that have changed, uh, or changes that have been made. Maybe not files, but changes. And that'll bring us up to patch level nine, at least as of earlier today. And once it starts downloading, it'll go very quickly. Okay, it's going to get 763 different patches, and there it goes 200, 270, 390, 460. I'm sure you need the running commentary. Uh, almost done. There it is done. And now it's unzipping uh, it, uh, checking those files against the existing ones and applying the patches. Won't take long at all. Uh, saying applying the patches. It doesn't do the install here. It's checking to see what will change. And then it's going to give us a little report. Pretty quickly here. Probably another 10 seconds or so. There we go, it's done. It's uh, fetching some more files and it's telling us that it's gonna get rid of a couple of files. Um, and as part of the update process, it's gonna get rid of Godtab and config.h from Unbound. And then it's at end. And this should look familiar. This is less. This is the same pager that we use for uh, man pages and stuff. So you can type Q here. And it says the following files will be added as part of updating. And if I control F through these, which is paging through them. One, two, okay, two pages of changes there. I hit Q. It says these are going to, these are the files that are get updated. Okay, fine. How many of those are there? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. There's about, I don't know, 40 pages of this. I can page through it. And then when I'm done, I can hit Q. Or I could just hit Q immediately and not have to page through it. But I kind of wanted to see what's going on. So there it fetched them. Now to install them, we just change fetch to install. FreeBSD-update install, and it will do the actual upgrade. Shouldn't take long at all. Uh, it's been about, oh, I don't know. It's been a couple of months since 12.1 came out. Actually, we can check while it's doing that. It'll give you something to do. FreeBSD.org. 12.1 came out. I don't know. When's this came out? There's the announcement. Did they put a date? No. Not that I can see. It was a while back, <laughs> uh, maybe a couple months. All right, so it's done installing the updates. Yay. That means that we should have new version numbers. So first thing we check is uname. And we see that nothing's changed there because we haven't rebooted, but it'll probably change on the reboot. And then freebsd-version-kru again. And now we see why that why that R thing is important. Um, this is the kernel version, so it's all the way up to patch level 9. This is the running version. We're still running 12.1 release because we haven't rebooted. And the user land, which is P9. Sometimes user land and kernel don't, they're not in sync. But that's not a problem, it's just weird. So we've completed the upgrade. It didn't tell us that it needed to reboot, so we probably don't need to reboot. but we, uh, we may do that anyway, but first let's check packages. So package, um, the first time you use package, it's uninitialized packages, is how you install packages, how you update them, and how you upgrade them. The, uh, the FreeBSD update that we just did was on the user land files and the kernel. Uh, FreeBSD is an OS, um, more so than Linux, which is a kernel. So if you were to upgrade Linux, if you will, you'd only be upgrading the kernel and not user land. Usually, maybe GNU or something like that. But in FreeBSD, um, 
you're updating both of those as part of the system. So FreeBSD update does that. But things that you install, like uh, different commands that you might need, like sudo or bash or something like that, those are packages, and they're managed by PKG. Well, PKG isn't, uh, it's not ready to use the first time you try to use it. So I'm going to do package update just to get update the metadata. And it's going to tell me that the package management tool isn't yet installed. You want to fetch it and install it. You say, sure, and it'll bootstrap. It knows a URL to go to get the version, the an initial version of the package. And so it downloads it, and then it runs it, and it runs the command we asked it to, which is update, which updates all the metadata. And at that at the time I ran this, just now, 31,950 uh, packages are available. So the next thing to do is package upgrade. See if there's any changes. There's probably not, but nope. Okay, system's fully up to date. We can reboot. So we will reboot and make sure that we are able to. Um, I'll come out of SSH and look at the console again and watch the reboot. This is like watching the monitor on your hardware. I do, I do the same exact process on the hardware that I have. I've got a Mac Pro, a Dell, a laptop, and other things you're running for BSD. All right, first thing we're going to do is you can check the boot environments. There's two boot environments. I hit seven, which brought me to this screen about boot environments. Um, we noticed that the active is the default, and we didn't crash anything, so that's okay. Uh, we can use that. If I hit two, it switches to working, which is the other one, which we don't need anymore, I don't think. But we'll, we'll make sure. We're going to boot the default, make sure that things are upgraded and working before we get rid of the other boot environment. Or we could leave it around for weeks and delete it later. Uh, it will accrue some space over time, though. So I'm going to boot to the default. It boots, and we should get to the login prompt without any significant error messages. Uh, just a reminder, these messages, the ones you're seeing now, are uh, either bright white or gray. The bright white are kernel messages, and the gray are like standard output messages. All right, so there we go. Log in. It's ready for that. So I'm going to go log in over here in my SSH. And let's check freebsd-version. There are you. This is, there are, everything's now P9, yay. Check you name just to see that we're advertising the right thing. And sure enough, it's P9. It seems like it's working good, so I'll become right. Pretend like I've been using it for weeks with no problem. All right, so we're logged in, yay. That's great, I don't know why I did LS, but at least we have LS back. <laughs> um, let's see, I was gonna check, oh, BECTL list. So we're running default, and working is no longer needed. Um, so we'll get rid of it, but first we'll remind ourselves of what snapshots are out there. All right, the 1818 snapshot corresponds to working. If I just deleted uh, BECTL destroy without the dash O, which is um, an option that'll get rid of the snapshot as well, if I just destroyed working, it says leaving origin snapshot intact. Okay, I'm going to copy that into my buffer. And in order to get rid of that one, which if we uh, BECTL list, we can see that there's just the default now. Sorry, BECTL list. We can see that we just have the default now. But in snapshots, I've still got that snapshot. And I don't need it anymore. Okay, so I can go ahead and destroy it. I can use uh, ZFS to do it. ZFS destroy, and then paste in all that long thing. It didn't complain, therefore it must have done something. <laughs> no data sets available. So now we're running the system in its current mode. So we're, we've, uh, we've successfully upgraded, and we can use the system just as it is. That's kind of it. So thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have any Comments, suggestions, constructive stuff only, please. Thanks. Bye.